Welcome everyone. I'm going to present a work title, A Stochastic Approach for Cosarat Rod Drawstring Model with Six Leap Motion. My name is Eduardo Goicoechea, and the co-authors of this work are Roberta Lima and Ruben Sampaio from Pontificia Universidade Católica do Rio de Janeiro, and Marta Rosales and Fernando Huesas from Universidad Nacional del Sur. Throughout this work, I will analyze the influence of some of the hypotheses employed in the contact condition of a horizontal section of a drill string. The presentation will be divided into four main sections. I will begin by talking about the motivation of this work. Here I will describe a paper that will be used as a reference for comparison. Next, I will briefly speak about the formulation of the Cosera theory of rocks. After that, I will present the results associated to two different studies. First, the friction forces will be treated in a deterministic way. Secondly, they will be treated as a random field in a stochastic study. The random field will be constructed by employing a Karun and Loaf expansion. And finally, I will talk about the conclusions to try to justify the use of a more sophisticated model than the one used in the reference. The aim of this work is to do a follow-up on a previous publication that is named Drill String Horizontal Dynamics with Uncertainty on the Friction of Force. In this publication, the authors studied the actual motion of a horizontal drill string. To do so, a bar model was used, which means that only actual displacements were allowed. Also, the hypothesis that friction occurs throughout the bar are employed, and it is considered to have a constant value. The novelty of this work is that a more complex model is employed. The formulation is that of a generalized rod, and therefore it can capture lateral displacements as well as actual and torsional ones. I will now present the problem under analysis. In this slide, a segment of a drill string is sketched. Note that only the ending portion of a drill string is being modeled. The cross section employed is that of a hollow cylinder with external and internal diameters d sub x and d sub n. The structure is a cantilever beam. Transversely, the left end is fixed, while actually it is allowed to advance due to the application of a force. At the right, a lumped mass is considered to represent the inertia added by the bit. The forces acting on the system are F sub STA, the force being transmitted by the portion of the pipe to the left, which is not being modeled. The forces related to contact and friction F sub C and F sub frick, the self weight F sub G, and F sub bit, a force acting on the bit. These forces will be described with more detail further on, but first I would like to give a glimpse at the formulation employed in the Cosarat theory of rocks. The formulation is obtained by following the usual path employed in the field of resistance of materials. First, some kinematic hypotheses are introduced. In our case, we consider that sections behave as rigid bodies during motion. Secondly, the equations of motion, which are the linear momentum balance and the angular momentum balance, are obtained by analyzing a rod segment. Third, a set, a set of constitutive relations is adopted to describe the relation between the kinematic variables and the forces and torques acting on the mechanical system. So, with regards to our first step, the kinematic hypothesis, the Cosera theory of rods describes the dynamics of a moving object by defining a center line and the position of a local coordinate frame which is rigidly fixed at each cross section. In this case, the local frame is denoted by d1, d2 and d3. The present formulation is stated in terms of material space, that is, in a Lagrangian approach. In the figure shown here, the reference configuration is represented by the vector capital X. The vector is written as a sum of the coordinates of the center line of the rod, S of 0, and an associated vector representing the local coordinates of the points lying at the cross section. The current position is referred to as lowercase x. In accordance with the kinematic hypothesis that I've mentioned, the current position is written as a sum of the position of the center line rod in the current configuration which is lowercase r, and the vector for the points lying in the cross-section in a rotated or current state. The equations of motion for the Cosarat theory are stated here. 
the first equation belongs to the linear momentum balance and the second equation to the angular momentum balance. As described here, vectors n and m are the internal forces and torques, while vectors mu and f are the applied forces and torques, respectively. Finally, there are the terms associated to the temporal derivative, which are the inertial terms. And, as already mentioned, the formulation is described in terms of the reference configuration. The constitutive relations employed in our case match those of a Kirchhoff rod and they are shown here, remembering that M represents the internal forces and M the internal torques. Now let's go back to the problem that we want to treat. Again, the sketch of the structure under analysis is shown here. Just as a reminder, F sub FTA was defined as the forces transmitted by the pipes of the portion of the rod that is not being modelled. Now I will focus on the forces acting on the bit, named F sub bit. Actually, F sub bit will be used to name the resultant of three different effects. The first one, F sub R, sub R, then F sub wall and F sub M. The model employed is exactly the same used in the reference paper for the three forces. F sub wall is a force that represents the interaction between the bit and the walls. The force follows the same exponential law employed in the reference paper. F sub r is a harmonic force, while the frequency employed in its definition is related to the frequency of operation of the mud motor. And F sub m represents the force associated to the inertial effect of the concentrated mass due to the bed. Next, the contact force and the friction force are defined. The contact force F sub c is defined to be proportional to the penetration of the structure into the soil. The penetration value is given by the function F sub sp and the proportional coefficient by k sub s. The function F sub sp takes the form of a square root of x squared plus y squared minus r, where r is the radius of the borehole cylinder. The direction of the contact force is in the direction of the normal of the cylinder, which is here given by F sub r. And on the other hand, the friction force, F sub frick, is proposed to be proportional to the normal contact force. K sub, r, sub, sub F r is a proportionality coefficient. The direction of the force opposes that of the velocity at the contact point. With regards to the proportionality coefficient, K sub F r, two different conditions are, are, are studied in this work, the deterministic case where KFR is a constant and a stochastic case. First, for the deterministic case, the coefficient K sub FR will take the value of 0.10. Second, for the stochastic case, the friction force will follow a truncated Gaussian field with a mean value of 0.12 and a deviation of the 10% of the mean value. The support considered goes from 0 to 0 0.6. The autocorrelation is assumed to be an exponential function with b as a decay rate. Then the field is obtained by employing a Carnot and Loeb expansion as shown in the slide. The different parameters that are employed in the simulation are shown here. For example, the length of the structure L is 60 meters with an external diameter of 0 0.15 meters an internal diameter of 0 0.10, and the structure is made of steel. Finally, we've arrived to the results section. For the deterministic case, the first difference is that, given the current boundary conditions, contact does not occur throughout the length of the, length of the rod. In this slide, a graph showing the shape of the penetration function is shown for the Cossarat rod model. It can be seen that, given the boundary conditions employed, there is a region where no penetration exists, another region with a peak, and then the ending of the graph where the penetration takes a constant value. In fact, remembering that in our model the contact force is proportional to the penetration, this has some implications with regards to the behavior of the contact condition. The effect of boundary condition at the left, which represents a stabilizer, generates a region where there is no contact between the structure and the soil. Then there comes a peak or maximum. And finally, 
a region where contact is uniform. In the last part, the contact force coincides with the value that would take in the hypothesis of uniform contact employed in the reference paper, and the magnitude is the same as for the static case. Now, remembering that we are still analyzing the deterministic case, a comparison of two different cases is shown. Case A considers the friction coefficient, K sub far, equal to 0 0.10, and the Cossarat rod model is used. That means that deflection is being considered, and contact, that is, the normal force, depends on the dynamics. Case B considers the same value for the friction coefficient, but contact is assumed to take a uniform value. Moreover, the magnitude of a normal force coincides with this static case, that is, the self-weight of the structure. The displacements for case A, which is the Gosserad rod model, are shown to the left, and for case B, which is the bar model, to the right. It is observed that the results differ qualitatively and also in magnitude. For the CR model, the displacements are in the order of 100 times higher. If we overlay the results, to the left we would see this difference in magnitude in the displacements, and to the right, comparing the magnitude of the velocities, we can see that case A does not exhibit any stick slip oscillations, as the velocity never reaches zero, which opposes the behavior observed in case B. Now, we show a comparison of the results obtained in the stochastic case. Remembering that the mean value for the distribution used in the friction field was 0 0.12 and the deviation was 0 0.1 mu, the results of some of the realizations are overlaid here, both for the displacement of the bed and its speed in the direction of the penetration. In order to have an idea of how these results differ from those of the reference paper, the definition for the power ratio employed in the reference paper is shown here. For each realization, the power ratio is a relation between the power delivered to the bit and the power introduced into the system, and is stated in, the, in this slide. The power introduced in this system is represented by two forces shown here, the power transmitted to the system by the pipes, which we are not modeling here, and the harmonic force. The power delivered to the bit is the power exerted by the bit force. The results for the stochastic case can be observed in this slide. To the left, a graph showing how the approximation of the PDF converges in deviation with the accumulated number of realizations, and to the right, the approximation to the PDF that has been calculated. A total number of 4,000 realizations were performed. A superposition of the results from the reference paper and the results and the new results is shown here. First of all, I would like to note that the mean value employed for the friction coefficient in both simulations is different. Due to the fact that contact condition differs, a lower, a lower mean value leads to dynamics where no stick slip oscillations appear, and then the distribution of power ratio results in an even higher and more picky function than the condition shown here. Again, the results show a quite different response in qualitative terms. To sum up, the conclusions of this work are that first, it is important to consider lateral deflection and a way to determine the contact forces directly from the dynamics, rather than imposing some contact condition hypothesis. That the choice of the contact condition can alter the region where stick slip oscillations is observed in the simulations. And the main point is that Considering homogeneous contact at every point may lead to inaccurate results under some circumstances. So, thank you very much for your time.